Cyber attacks have become more frequent in recent years, with targets including large enterprises, the public sector, and home users. Large enterprises with dedicated network security teams are not immune, with hackers attempting to gain access and potentially control over IT systems. It's obvious that even if there are professionals managing and strengthening security, there are still risks of being hacked. An example is Revil, a ransomware hacker group recently arrested in Russia. They have successfully invaded large technology groups, the world's largest meat processor, and a U.S. renewable energy company. As many individuals and small business users have insufficient security, the potential ransom money that could be attained by hacker groups makes them a large target. Enterprises and individual users must strengthen their device security to reduce the risk of being hacked. Why have ransomware attacks increased? We'll start by explaining how hackers, cryptocurrencies, and ransomware relate to each other. Cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum have a history of being used by malicious groups as illegal transaction channels due to their decentralization and lack of traceability compared to traditional financial currencies. Ransomware is when hackers infiltrate a device, encrypt the device's data, and then blackmail the device users. For example, the ransomware WannaCry that affected computers worldwide in 2017 mainly targeted Windows PCs. It exploited a vulnerability within Microsoft's SMB protocol to attack user devices. Once encrypted, users were extorted to pay for decryption in Bitcoin. The high-risk aspect of hacking a system and extorting ransom is the part that receives the ransom. Because the transaction process is easier for law enforcement to track and make arrests. The emergence of cryptocurrencies has been improperly exploited by hackers as a solution, resulting in increasing cyber attacks. Finally, the hacking-related industry chain refers to collecting money to provide various intrusion services to help specific organizations achieve certain goals. There are two main ways of intrusion, from the internet and from the intranet. First of all, from the internet. This means by connecting directly through an external network, it is a target that can be directly attacked. For example, manually configure the port forwarding device on the router, manually set the DMZ to a device on the router, use UPnP on your router to automatically configure port forwarding, or connect the device directly to the one interface provided by the network provider. As for from the internet, it refers to invading a device on the intranet in various ways and then laterally infiltrating other devices in the intranet. It is also possible to use the router's UPnP functionality to automatically set port forwarding to open a back door and then invade the intranet device. How do hackers get the IP address of their target? The first method is to use platforms like Shodan.io that list unprotected devices that are connected to the Internet. Port scanning can then be used to find ports that these network devices have exposed to the outside world and then try to intrude such devices. Most hackers will use the above methods to obtain potential target addresses and then try to attack and invade the devices. Now that we understand how hackers find their targets, Let's take a look at the common types of attacks. The first is to crack the password by brute force, and the other is to exploit software vulnerabilities. Let's talk about brute force password cracking. Hackers will use a botnet to continuously try to log into the device with different passwords. They generally target the default administrator account. For example, accounts such as admin or root Hackers also exploit software vulnerabilities. First of all, we must remind you that there is no perfect software and there are always bugs. Information security research institutions often report vulnerabilities for manufacturers to fix, and hackers take advantage of these fixes and updates 
to reverse analyze the vulnerabilities of previous software versions and launch attacks within a short period of time. Patch Tuesday and Hack Wednesday. This statement comes from Microsoft's previous habit of releasing patches on Tuesdays, and hackers often finding vulnerabilities in old versions in a very short period, leading to attacks on Wednesday. In addition, Hackers often exploit vulnerabilities that have not yet been patched, often referred to as zero-day vulnerabilities. Hackers often target devices that are not behind firewalls before vulnerabilities are discovered or fixed. What happens after being hacked? There are five common scenarios. The first is to use the computing power of the device to mine cryptocurrencies, which is commonly known as mining. The second is to turn the device into a botnet attack springboard to conduct intrusions and attacks on behalf of the hacker. The third is to install ransomware on the device to encrypt the files and then demand a ransom. The fourth is to perform malicious damage, delete important files, destroy file systems, or leave malicious information. Another increasing common scenario is that hackers steal data mainly trade secrets or non-disclosure agreement files of large enterprises, in order to threaten and blackmail the enterprise with confidential information. Now that you understand hacking, cryptocurrencies, and cyber attacks, how do you prevent and respond to cyber attacks? Below are three suggestions. The first is to prevent attackers from connecting to your device. The second is to improve device defenses. The third is to develop a disaster recovery plan. How to stop attackers from connecting to your device? The router is arguably the first line of defense. You should make it as hard as possible for attackers to gain access to your network. The first thing you should do is review what functionality, such as port forwarding, UPnP, and DMZ, and ports are required, and disable everything you do not use. Also, do not connect the device directly to the one interface provided by your internet service provider. Secondly, avoid using default port numbers such as 80, 443, 8080, 8081, 5000, and more. Thirdly, use a firewall to control who can access your NAS and devices. Fourthly, use a secure connection method, such as connecting to the intranet through a VPN, or access the files after connecting the device through a relay server. In addition to the above methods to reduce the risk of being discovered or attacked by hackers, you can also improve the information security settings of your devices to further strengthen information security. Check if you have done the following eight things. One. Disable the default admin account and use strong passwords, containing a mixture of upper, lowercase characters, numbers, and symbols to deter brute force attacks. 2. Enable two-step authentication. This provides an extra layer of security that usually requires users to enter a passcode generated on their mobile device. It is strongly recommended to use two-step authentication for most online and remote working environments. 3. Keep software updated to the latest version, including system and application updates. 4. Enable auto-blocking. Your network or servers should block IP addresses from accessing your system if many incorrect passwords are entered in a short period of time. 5. Disable unused services and applications. This reduces the number of potential access points to your system and also eases overall maintenance of your system. 6. Install antivirus software. 7. Do not use software or hardware that is no longer actively supported by its developer. Your devices or software must be capable of receiving up-to-date bug fixes and security updates to prevent vulnerabilities from being exploited. 8. Develop a disaster recovery plan. It is impossible to fully protect a system from being attacked, but it is fully within your power to prepare for worst case scenarios and to ensure that there are plans and mechanisms in place 
to quickly restore data and services if they are attacked. The largest fuel pipeline system in the United States was hacked in 2021, and this led to the fuel supply being temporarily affected. They were able to use a recovery mechanism to restore system operations. For Windows devices or Mac devices, you can enable System Restore or Time Machine respectively to restore files to an earlier state. In addition, ensure that data is fully backed up. Many people misunderstand the meaning of backup, thinking that backup is complete after creating a RAID disk array or saving files to external hard drives or NAS devices. It is recommended to follow the 3-2-1 backup principle. Three backups have at least three copies of your files. Two copies on different storage media, for example, computer, NAS, USB drive, cloud storage, etc. Offsite backup refers to storing files in different locations. For example, one NAS in the company and the other at home. Through a combination of the above three information security measures, including preventing attackers from connecting to your device, improving the defense of the device, developing a disaster recovery plan. The risk of being hacked and intruded is greatly reduced, thus effectively defending against malware threats. All QNAP NAS storage devices support snapshot protection, and snapshots can also be backed up and restored off-site. Deploy QNAP multifunctional routers and networking products to enhance network security. Information security is QNAP's top priority.